Well, today I decided to do something I haven't done since I moved in this house, and that's make a lasagna. So I'm going to let you in on my secrets here. Yeah, I said lasagna, and look what showed up. The first customer. <laughs> I, uh, I've got some no-boil lasagna noodles, and I'm boiling them anyways because I have to have them soft so I can work them. I can't. Uh, I don't want to break them up to get them to fit in there. Ground beef's already browned and ready to go, seasoned. Got my spices lined up. What I did is uh, I sprayed the pan with some butter-flavored non-stick spray. And that's my thick lasagna pan, by the way. And the tray is lined with uh, mozzarella slices. And I've got everything else here. I got my sauce. I've got... Uh, cottage cheese and then uh, shredded mozzarella to go on there and then of course I got my spices again so I'm gonna build them layers up with that and while my stuff is getting uh, warmed up over there I'm gonna go ahead and start get that down here kind of tough to hold this camera phone while I'm working on everything Spread all this good stuff out. Italian sangria, except with no fruit. <laughs> and once I get it in there, and that little trick I do, if I can find it. Take a little basting brush and dip it in that hot water. Then I'll come back and I paint up the sides a little bit. Because if there's some extra moisture on that sauce, in the sauce, and I get it up on the cheese, it keeps the cheese from wanting to burn. And, uh, it doesn't pull the moisture out of the cheese. And the sauce helps the glue all that together as one thing. And I basically got that ready. And that's the first layer. So, what we need to do next is a little bit of hamburger. over here a little closer to it. Take our tools with us. Now I tend to do things a little bit backwards or different than a lot of people. Spread some of this around. We don't want to put it all in here. Remember, lasagna is the Art of layering just a little bit right there. All right, that's the first layer. Let's check out our little fellas there. See there. Yeah, we're right, just starting to cooperate. As soon as we get those softened up, we got to take them right out because we don't want to overcook them. Yeah, we're gonna go back here. We got uh, lasagna already. The cheese. Oh yeah. Let's see. Make sure this is all broke up. Make sure it's fresh. No problem with it. Go a little bit in here. That's the end of that bag, so I might as well commit it all. Get these little chunks out of here and see if we can sling them on the sides and the bare spots. And then 
we need to have some lasagna noodles to lay on there. Let me see here. You know, something else I want to check. I like to check all my ingredients for freshness. Mm. Mm. I'm going to sit down and eat that by myself. <laughs> Just me and a spoon. Alright, I'm going to turn the heat off on that. I can't see them anymore, so they must have dropped down enough I can get them in here. I'm going to take some of them out and get started. One. Come on. That's right, it's one time to over with. I'm going to hit them again with another one. Come on out there, pretty boy. Yes, they are slightly hot. Now, back to the sauce. He's on the sauce again, boys. AA didn't work. Make sure, make sure that's it pretty you don't want a whole lot you don't want to make this stuff soupy if you do that you start getting it hard to deal with and you, your flavor profile gets a little confusing all right that's my first layer of that i'm gonna come back And I put the, a few layers of cheese on if I can get it to cooperate. This cheese likes to be aggravating. Let's see if I can get that one over there. This stuff wants to tear. I'm just getting it. I'm going to distribute it because remember once it melts in the oven at 350 it's going to travel a little bit not much I get this last piece to come apart just trying to take the other one with it I gotta get me a tripod for putting the camera on and I can free up this other hand now, let's see, I'll sprinkle us a little more of this stuff, because we want that meat flavor to embed that melting cheese as it's going. All right, rock and roll. Now, oh, there's that special sound I want to hear. Probably should have got two tubs of this stuff. One for cooking and one for snacking. Because it is good for you. I grew up on this stuff. My mom, my adopted mom, she bought this all the time. It was dirt cheap. You get a tub of this back in the 60s for 20 cent. And uh, I learned to like it. It was pretty good. And uh, I was a little strange though. I, uh, I like to put ketchup on it. <laughs> back then I did. Now I don't dare do it. All right, now I can put a little layer of this lovely stuff. Let's see here. Oh man, I'm getting good at this one-handed cooking. I have a YouTube channel, The One-Handed Chef. All right. 
of how this is going. Uh-oh. Making a mess. Oh, at least I ain't got a wife to yell at me anymore for making a mess. I'm going to yell at myself now. Pick up the gauntlet. Now, after that second layer is put together, I'll put a little bit of parsley in there. Just a little bit to let it know that it's part of my evil plan. And then, I like to sprinkle just a little bit of pizza seasoning. That sounds weird, but it makes a very unique flavor. And just a little a little bit of oregano, not much, just enough to make it know what it's supposed to be doing here. Get all them goodies in there where they belong. Hmm, that's killer. Now, back to the ranch. Another layer. Another blanket to keep the baby warm. That's what the old man in the Italian restaurant used to tell me. I don't know what that meant. Old guy. In Mama's Italian kitchen. I had a job in there. And then later on, I worked in Sal's Italian kitchen in Norfolk, Virginia. Started out washing dishes. And then one day, Somebody got in trouble and couldn't be at work, and I had to help out making pizzas. And then, uh, next thing you know, I'm cooking. So, the old guy taught me was from, oh, uh, I can't remember the place. It's the little island next to Sicily. I want to say Salerno, but I don't think that's right. I don't know. It's been so long. Back in the late 70s, before I went in the Army. All right. Get that in there. So what's going to happen is I'm not trying to get this sauce all down in the sides. Because with these little racetrack patterns in these, this sauce is going to, it's going to juice up. Because they put so much water in the jarred sauces now. Trying to rip us off it. It's really actually pretty sad. And they'll all distribute out. I'm going to spread this out a little bit. My taste tester is standing behind me. He's very nervous. He can't wait. All right. Get a few more pieces here. Martha Stewart ain't got nothing on me, Jack. I'll tell you what. Her or Snoop Dogg, for that matter. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, there. You know what? You know you want to be part of a masterpiece. There you go. Now, I'm gonna, tell you, I'm gonna tell you right up front. I don't worry about the grease in the hamburger because most of it's still in the pan. But uh, I want to figure out how I want to do this next part. I guess. I guess I can put the rest of this. Good stuff in there. Let's make another thin layer of this. Just kind of splattering around. There's not much left. I should have got two, but I think this is going to be just right. Just the right. I'm going to tell you now, it's difficult enough to learn how to cook when you don't have a clue. But to try and learn from somebody that no speak of the English, that is a problem. So like anything else in life, even though my learning disabilities held me back in some areas, I had excellent visual skills and uh, I had a photographic memory to a certain extent. And I'm also ambidextrous, so I can make do 
with pretty much both hands and use both sides of my brain at the same time. Have too much cheese. All right, that's enough. I'm gonna overpower that bad boy. I'm gonna put the other part of the parsley I want. Close that up because that stuff's expensive. And we've got a little bit, tiny bit more of the pizza seasoning because there's a particular little bit of cilantro, not cilantro, but uh, I can't think what they call it now. It is cool, tasty. And I got a little bit of sauce, so. Uh, I'll put some little color spots on it. Pardon me if I don't keep the camera on it like I'm supposed to, but I'm a one hand band. <laughs> and I can do the best I can. Lovely. Oh boy. It smells good. The smell of the good. Now let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Now comes the fun part. Torture myself. I'm gonna put it right in there. Put it on the top shelf, right in front, and let it rock and roll for about I'd say 35 to 45 minutes. I'll check it, and then we'll go from there. And I'll take and what I'll do is uh, when it's done. Instead of making another video, I'll just make a little still photograph and put that on there at the bottom of the uh, of the post that I put on uh, Facebook. From uh, I'll probably put it on uh, put it on my uh, you Yahoo uh, YouTube. <laughs> Can't keep me straight. My YouTube channel because I'm trying to boost that up. Get all our stuff cleaned up here. We're ready to go. If it stopped raining outside, I'll get all these Jersey tomatoes planted. They're ready to go. That would be wonderful. I can get lucky enough to get a bunch of those. So, if anybody wants to come help me clean up now, now's the time. Let's see what we can get with what we have here. Yeah. If y'all new to this channel, Tell your friends that you found a new fool on on uh, YouTube, Facebook too, that knows how to cook a little bit. I know what's wrong, so I know how to avoid making most of the mistakes. So tune in, and uh, we're going to have us some lasagna tonight, Jack. Cool. Nice looking toy. I will talk to y'all later. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I know I will because I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight, Jack. Talk to you later. Bye.